In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we continue this celebration, we do so as sinners. So let us acknowledge those sins and so prepare ourselves to receive the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and to you, you my brothers and sisters, and sisters that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen. Amen. a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah on this mountain the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us, for the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A responsorial psalm. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. 
He refreshes my soul. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. I shall, shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. I shall, I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of going in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks Speak be to God. God. According to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus again, in reply, spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves are fed, and cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, on one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their cities. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads, and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So my sisters and brothers, it seems like that Jesus continually reminds us that when he comes back, there's going to be a big party. Everyone is invited to the party. Whether you believe yourself worthy or unworthy, everyone is invited to this party. Everybody is invited to the kingdom of God, to the banquet that Jesus will bring us to. Now, those are all metaphors for heaven, but we're all invited. We all have an opportunity to go. We all have an opportunity to express our faith, celebrate the sacraments. In doing that, we get there. So it's interesting that there are a lot of people who turn down that invitation. And there are many, many reasons why they turn down the invitations. One big one is, well, the Ravens play on Sunday, so we really don't want to go to church because the Ravens are playing. It's, it's easier that way. 
Some are because they're so busy with their day-to-day -day lives, especially during the pandemic as things start to ease up a little bit. They're trying to catch up on what they lost when we were all in lockdown. Others don't want to celebrate the banquet with the banquet because they have this misguided idea that to celebrate, to come to church, to be a part of, of a church community is to have to follow all of these rules and regulations and get weighed down by everything. And you look at these rules and regulations, the do's and the don'ts, the yes and the no's, and it just seems like it sucks the air out of the room. It sucks the joy out of celebrating these sacraments, this, this faith of ours. Now, those of us who come to church, who watch church on, on, um, on video, on YouTube, we know that it's not like that. That all are welcome, sinners, saints, and all points in between. And it's not the rules and the regulations. Yeah, they're there. However, they don't take the joy out of it. As a matter of fact, we bring the joy. We have to invite people to our church. We have to invite people to watch liturgy, to be a part of liturgy. And we do it by being a disciple of Christ, by following the gospel message of not being judgmental, tolerant, being merciful, being forgiving, being kind, being joyful. So it's not that people show up and say, oh my God, here we are again, we're doing it again, or I gotta watch this or I'm gonna burn. No, we participate in these sacraments because it brings us joy, it gets us closer to God, it helps our relationship with Christ. But to be honest with you, the key though is, well the key to all of us, you and I. We invite people to this banquet, to the kingdom here on earth. And I have to tell you, I've had experiences where those parishioners will wonder, why don't people want to come to our church? And the first thing I think of is, well, have you been invited? When they show up, do you look and say, who are you? Or do you smile and say, welcome? How do you, how do you greet people who may not, you don't know, and who haven't been to the front door? Or God forbid they have questions about our faith. How do you do it? What do you do? Things have changed since the last time I was here. As a student friar, I've been assigned, I was assigned to different parishes in the province because the, the, our formators wanted us to get a taste of what it would be like ministering full time. And I was at one of our parishes and as the student, I was tasked with answering the telephone. And then when I answered the phone, if it was the hospital or a nursing home, I had to get a priest and tell them what was going on and they would go anoint if it was somebody asking what time the mass times were, I had the list, so I answered, I had, could answer that. Well, this one phone call did not prepare, nothing prepared me for this phone call, to be honest with you. So a, a woman called and said, Father, I have a question for you. Now, I wasn't a priest, but it didn't seem like it was proper to correct her. So I said, well, what's your, what's your uh, question? She says, are Catholics allowed, or non-Catholics allowed to be buried in the Catholic cemetery? Who knew? like two years in vows, I didn't know. So I said, you know, I'm, I'm really not sure. I said, why are you asking that? Well, she said, this woman had her husband, who was a Catholic, buried at our cemetery, St. Stan Cemetery. And she said, that's not right. He's not Catholic. And I said, well, is she? And she said, well, yes, but he's not. And then she went on to educate me on Catholicism. And I hung up the phone and I went right to the pastor and I told him what happened. And he kind of smiled and he said, so you're getting a real firsthand experience of what it's like to be a pastor and a parish priest. We we'll put aside the, the theology, the, the bad theology for a second. But if that woman hadn't been in the Catholic Church, which she hadn't, she hadn't, she hadn't been there because her husband wasn't Catholic and she didn't feel welcome. If she was even thinking about coming back, she dropped that idea like a hot potato. Because her first experience after being away from the church was this woman who told her, your husband doesn't belong where he is. Why would you do that? That's not Catholicism. Well, first, yeah, it is. And, and second, where was the compassion? Where was the mercy? Where was the tolerance? All of that was gone. So in a sense, we lost 
that woman who buried her husband, and I'm willing to bet we lost her family. Because she probably told her kids what happened, and her kids were like, well, I'm not going to that church. I'm not going to be bothered with it. So we lost her and her family because someone couldn't understand that all are welcome, that our doors, our pews, our church is for everybody, sinners and saints alike. And so, sisters and brothers, we invite people through our kindness, through our compassion, through a smile, through a welcome. Welcome to St. Casimir. We're glad you're here. The pews are marked for social distancing. They're marked, but please join us in celebration. Make sure you wear your mask. We welcome everybody. We welcome them with a smile. We welcome them with a welcome back. I'm glad you're here. I know it's been a long pandemic. Whether they were coming before or not, we welcome. That's compassion. That's kindness. That's discipleship. That's welcoming everybody. As I said, sinner and saint alike. Because we're all sinners, actually, if we think about it. We're all sinners. None of us are saints. We go by the grace of God. We get there. And by God's grace, we're able to make it through. And so we should welcome those who haven't been into our church in years and years. We welcome back all of you who might come back, who find, who might start feeling comfortable to come back. And we welcome you back with open arms, just like we would welcome back anybody. My only thing that I would ask of you, my sisters and brothers, is this. As you start coming back, as you start coming back because you're feeling a little bit more comfortable, a little more safe, you see how we do things and we do things in a very safe way, when you do come back, don't judge those who don't. Because not everybody's ready. Not everybody is ready to come back and sit in the pews. They will be in time. But until that time, welcome back all of you. And those, when they are ready to come back, you welcome them back like you were welcome back. Because sisters and brothers, in the end, that's exactly what our gospel tells us today. All are welcome. And those who have been at the banquet, those who have been celebrating, need to open their arms and welcome those who haven't. Amen. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death, death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. My sisters and brothers, we believe that God answers all of our prayers. Let us now ask him for the needs of our community and of our world. For our church, may God continue to help us grow in holiness and strength as we nurture a culture of healing and life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, pray hear our prayer. For lawmakers, may God's grace direct their hearts in proposing laws that protect the life and rights of all people, including those yet to be born. We pray to the Lord. Lord, pray hear our prayer. prayer. For all who are sick, may they know the healing power of Christ, who is our divine physician. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here, 
May the Lord continue to help us speak the truth in charity to one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, may they find a place at the banquet of life in the eternal kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Today we remember in a special way Anna Skrzynski and Emily and Joseph Kropkowski for whom this liturgy is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these and all of our prayers. And as always, we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we proclaim... formed us in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care so that in serving you alone the creator we might have dominion over all creatures and when through disobedience we had lost your friendship you did not abandon him us to the dominion of death but for for you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you time and again you offered us covenants and through the prophets taught us to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. 
and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit <clears throat> as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to its fullest. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of his glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now for all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, William, our Archbishop, the whole order of bishops and all the clergy, the religious, the deacons, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, St. Maximilian Colby, St. Francis and Clare, and all the saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, free from the corruption of sin and death, we may glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world everything that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My sisters and brothers, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith, and the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us now offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you, my friends. My sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away all of the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. My sisters and brothers, let us now pray the prayer for spiritual communion. Soon, my friends, hopefully we'll all be together around the table. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us continue our day in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you.